Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I talk about the NWSL, women's soccer, just soccer, only soccer. The international break may be over, but the chaos that is the NWSL is still going on strong. In this video, I'll be discussing the results of the NWSL slash Players Association joint investigation into former Orlando Pride head coach Amanda Cromwell and former assistant coach Sam Green. If you need a refresher, Cromwell and Green were accused of retaliating against players on the Orlando Pride back in June of this year. They were both suspended and placed on leave pending the results of the investigation. The results were released on October 10th. I'm getting to this a few days late because one, I was really busy, and two, I wanted to make sure I had all the details, screenshots, information, and links for this video because things get a little weird at the end. That all being said, let's get into it, starting with the results of the investigation. I'll have the link to the report by the NWSL linked in the description below. So let's go back to March 2022. The NWSL slash Players Association were investigating allegations of verbal abuse and improper favoritism towards players by Amanda Cromwell, and improper favoritism by assistant coach Sam Green. So this was before allegations of retaliation came about. According to the NWSL slash Players Association, some of the allegations were substantiated. In other words, some of it was true. Cromwell and Green received written warnings and Cromwell was required to participate in leadership training. Personally, if I was in Cromwell and Green's shoes and I was basically given this second chance, I would hold myself accountable, acknowledge what I did wrong, and publicly apologize to the Pride team. I would ask the players to anonymously write down what they thought I could work on. My lacrosse coach had us do this. And you know, I would actively work to better myself for the team. Maybe I would seek therapy or talk to a sports psychologist maybe convince the owners to hire a sports psychologist for the team. Do you think Cromwell and Green accepted responsibility and accepted their punishment with grace? Well, I wouldn't be reporting on this if they did. In May 2022, the NWSL slash Players Association then received reports that Cromwell and Green were engaging in retaliatory conduct towards players who they believed had initiated, participated in, and were supportive of the original March investigation. Based on a thorough investigation conducted by the NWSL slash Players Association Joint Investigative Team, these allegations of retaliation by Cromwell and Green were substantiated. The Joint Investigative Team found that Cromwell and Green engaged in retaliation and attempted retaliation against Pride players whom Cromwell and Green believed had made or supported earlier misconduct allegations against them in violation of league policy. According to the investigation, Cromwell and Green were found to have engaged in conduct that discouraged reporting and fostered a general fear of retaliation and have taken negative actions against certain players, including by seeking to waive or trade them. If you think it ends here, wait till you hear this. The joint investigative team also found out that goalkeeper coach Aileen Rice did not fully cooperate with the investigation. In fact, she was trying to interfere with the investigation. She was trying to pressure players into sharing fa favorable information with investigators. This is in violation of league policy. The joint investigative team reported their findings to the NWSL commissioner, Jessica Berman, the Players Association Executive Director, Megan Burke, and the Orlando Pride ownership. And if you think it ends here, you're wrong. In June 2022, Cromwell, Green, Rice, and assistant coach Michelle Akers raised complaints that they were subjected to various forms of misconduct. By who, though? The players, the investigators, the NWSL slash Players Association. Anyway, the league threw... Um, the league, through a third-party investigator, conducted an investigation completely independent from the joint investigation by the NWSL slash Players Association into these coaches' complaints. And after a thorough investigation, the third-party investigator found the coaches' complaints unsubstantiated. Based 
On the findings, the league has imposed the following discipline. Cromwell and Green's employment contracts are terminated effective immediately. Cromwell and Green are ineligible to work in the NWSL in any capacity unless or until approved by the commissioner. In order to be eligible for future employment in the NWSL, Cromwell and Green must participate in mandatory training regarding retaliation, discrimination, harassment, and bullying, and must participate in mandatory executive coaching as determined by the commissioner at the league's expense. Cromwell and Green may apply to the commissioner for consideration only after they have successfully completed the mandatory training and coaching, acknowledged wrongdoing, and demonstrated a sincere commitment to modifying their behavior. Rice, for her role, is placed on unpaid administrative leave effective immediately. Rice is required to participate in mandatory training regarding retaliation, discrimination, harassment, and bullying, and must participate in mandatory mandatory executive coaching as determined by the commissioner and at the league's expense. Rice may not return to work until she has completed the mandatory training, acknowledged wrongdoing, and demonstrated a sincere commitment to modifying her behavior. However, she may return to and continue to work while she is completing the executive coaching requirements. The league is also mandating Additional training regarding retaliation, discrimination, harassment, and bullying for the entire Orlando Pride organization to establish and ensure everyone is on notice of the league's expectations for appropriate conduct and behavior within the NWSL. And I'm going to close this part here. Orlando Pride Chairman Mark Wilf released this statement. We would like to thank our player, staff, and the joint investigative team for their commitment to ensure a thorough and transparent investigation. Our organization has received a review of the findings regarding retaliatory conduct toward Pride players and supports the actions taken by the National Women's Soccer League, including the league's decision, decision to terminate the contracts of Amanda Cromwell and Sam Green effective immediately. Our club is dedicated to providing a safe, inclusive, and respectful environment, and we apologize to our players who may have experienced otherwise. We are committed to learning from this process as we continue to build and grow the pride into the premier organization our players and fans deserve. As a step in that process, we will be implementing anti-retaliation training for all pride staff members on both the soccer operations side and in the front office. As we move forward, we will work with our coaching staff to determine the best next steps for all parties. We recognize that hiring the club's next head coach is a critical step forward, and we will immediately begin a process to identify a leader that will embody the values of our organization, bring a competitive roster to the field, and most importantly, protect and advocate for our players. The league is in the middle of an important and necessary moment of systemic change. As a club, we will support the recommendations of last week's Yates report, as well as the findings and feedback from the anticipated NWSL slash NWSL Players Association joint investigation. We are committed to an we are committed to doing our part to ensure as an organization we are building the best environment and culture possible while collectively establishing a stronger and safer NWSL. We look forward to continuing our support of the team's efforts on and off the field as we build toward the 2023 season and beyond. Honestly, I would probably make Seb Hines the head coach. After what ha happened with Cromwell and Green, he was able to get the Pride team back on track. No, we didn't make it to the playoffs. Yes, we ended number 10 in the standings, but he was able to build that trust back with the players. If the ownership, deci if the ownership decides not to go with Seb Hines, the new head coach needs a very, very thorough background check because this, all this that happened with Cromwell and Green cannot happen again. The NWSL Players Association then released this statement thanking Pride players for coming forward. The NWSL Players Association commends the Orlando Pride players who came forward to raise concerns surrounding misconduct by coaches Amanda Cromwell, Sam Green, 
and Aileen Rice. All NWSL players should be free to voice their concerns without fear of retaliation. We appreciate the diligent work of our joint investigative team and Orlando Pride ownership to act quickly and put player safety first. So that's the end, right? The results were released, Cromwell, Green, and Rice were disciplined. It's all said and done. And not quite. <laughs> Amanda Cromwell decided to release a statement of her own after the results of the investigation were made public. She says in her statement, I am saddened and disappointed by the results of the NWSL's investigation released today. I believe the investigation lacked transparency, professionalism, and thoroughness, and as a result, my character and integrity have been mischaracterized. The Orlando Pride coaching staff, GM, and board of directors made a personal decision to waive a player based on performance and conduct that was detrimental to the team culture. Upon my hiring, I was asked to correct the culture from previous years. The conversations regarding the team's performance and culture were discussed weekly with the board and this and this particular decision which was made to protect the players was approved by the coaching staff, GM and board. I was placed on administrative leave for the integrity of the resulting investigation after it was alleged that my actions were retaliatory. Throughout this process, I have remained silent as I have fully cooperated with a biased and incomplete investigation in an effort to clear my name and protect the reputation I have built as a, as both a professional player and a coach for nearly 40 years. There is no doubt that there has been a culture of abuse in the NWSL. I acknowledge the importance of due process and the need for the NWSL to investigate all claims. However, the abusive behavior in the NWSL goes beyond just the players. All of the women on my coaching staff have raised serious concerns about the work environment, and I will be reviewing all legal options. Signed, Amanda Cromwell. I don't know, Coach Cromwell. The NWSL and Players Association seem thorough with their investigation. It's pretty cut and dry, and I applaud the NWSL and the Players Association for making the results of this investigation public. According to you, you may have had support from the coaching staff, GM, board of directors, but nowhere in this statement do you mention the actual Pride players supporting you in having your back. In fact, Amy Turner, who many fans believed was the player that was retaliated against, the player who I'm assuming from your statement was detrimental to the team culture, had so much support from fans, coaches, and players. When Amy Turner was bought out of her contract, fans, coaches, players, including Pride players across the league came out in support of her, and they had nothing but good things to say about her. When it comes to Amanda Cromwell's statement, many fans were side-eyeing the end of her statement where she said she will be reviewing all legal options. Some fans were saying Cromwell might sue, but honestly, who's she going to sue? The NWSL, the Players Association, the Pride players who reported her, Amy Turner all the way in England? Cindy LaRue, former Pride player, now Angel City player, then released this bit of information on her Twitter account after the results of the investigation were released. She says, hounding players to go to the investigative team and tell them that the players who raised concerns were liars and bullies. In regards to Cromwell's statement, Cromwell has no remorse and has taken no accountability for her actions. Because of that, and for the safety of all players, she should not be anywhere near this league and nowhere near a team of any kind. Now, let's end this on something good. Amy Turner and her fiancé, Angara James, are playing together at Tottenham Hotspurs in England, which is probably the best ending to this whole mess because at the end of the day, they wanted to play together and be on the same team together. I'm happy that they get to do that now. Anyway, that is all I have for you guys today or tonight, and I'll see you all in the next one. Later.